you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 46. We'll have uh, the verses on the screen if you don't have your Bible here today, that's okay. Um, In preparing for today, there was really no preparation. Um, With this event that occurred, uh, immediately we wanted to do something, but we really wanted to turn our hearts and mind to God through his word uh, that provides us the sustenance that we need in life. And so today we're going to read Psalm 46. We're going to talk about it briefly, uh, where our hearts and mind can go to when these moments occur in our life, not just including with our pastor Jonathan, but also just in any aspect of our life. Uh, Psalm 46 is uh, historically well known because it is a, uh, it's about God is our fortress. Martin Luther, the great reformer of the 16th century, wrote a song about this psalm. And the reason why is that often at times he would come to this psalm when life threw him tough questions he could not answer. Even when his son was uh, dying, he came to the psalm for relief and comfort, uh, reminding us yet again and again that God's word is the only thing by which we can have our hope and rely on that God has given us. And so today I want to go through Psalm 46 for a couple minutes, talk about what we can get from this and how this affects our life, and then we are going to take a time of intense prayer as Jonathan begins his recovery Lord willing, and uh, we'll then dismiss the service. So go Psalm 46, in verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, Though the mountains tremble at its swelling, Selah. Selah is the phrase that you often see as italicized in the Psalms. And what Selah really means is ponder and reflect and pause about what was just said. So we're going to do what the psalmist has told us to do. In my life in times where we can't figure things out, what we have to always remind ourselves is God is our refuge. It is our place that we go when we don't have the answers. In the midst of uncertainty and impossibilities, we serve a God who is greater than all that. He is the God of our refuge. He's where we can go for our strength, for the times of struggles that we have. But notice here what he says, and I like this. There are four times he says, though. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved, though the waters roar and foam, and though the mountains tremble. All of us have these though moments. My though moment was Friday when my wife and I took a day off work and I got the call. And anytime I get a call and someone's crying on the other end, it's never a good call besides my wife telling me, you passed, you become an attorney. That was the only time that's ever happened that was good for me. The other times have always been something bad, and this was bad. And as I was trying to process what had happened, I immediately just knew that I only only could do one thing, which was take action and go. And so we went to the hospital to see my friend and my pastor. And that though moment, in the moment of our those, the reality is we don't remember God in those moments because something has taken priority. And that's understandable, but the psalmist tells us again and again, despite the those that we have, those moments, we have to go to God. We can't go to ourselves. We can't even trust in ourselves and the doctor's those who claim to have answers, because at the end of the day, they can let us down. But we go to God, who is our refuge. Notice also verses 4 through 7. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. God is our sustainer. The river he mentions is the river uh, taking us back to the Garden of Eden where God's constant provision is what's fueling the garden. But that river doesn't stop in the garden, but it's fulfilled in Jesus Christ, who is the everlasting water that we feed and live off of today. But notice something here. Notice that the river goes through the city of God. Notice it's the holy habitation. 
that God is in the midst of this city, this holy habitation. That's us. That's his church. I mean, this week, the past 48 hours, I mean, I rarely don't have my iPhone die so quickly, but it died. And it wasn't because I was on Facebook. It was because I was getting blown up in a good way. God's people showed up in numbers, reaching out to me, to the Castlebaum family, showing us their love and their support, whatever was needed. And that was an incredible moment of seeing God's church in action. But in this moment, what often happens is we have to recognize that God's grace, even in these moments of our those, it's still sufficient for all things. That his grace sustains us even in the moments that we can't comprehend. Even in the moments where things aren't going the way they should. They sustain us. So notice also the last couple verses. Come, verse 8, come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And here's the best one. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. This here, after seeing that God is our refuge and God is our sustainer, God is also our peace. He's our peace even in the midst of chaos. Even in the midst of spiritual warfare where the enemy is trying to take a, a hold of something in our life or trying to affect someone with sin or affect one of our brothers in Christ, even in those moments, he still remains the God of peace. And I love here what he says, the psalmist. This is so well known. Be still. In the moments of our confusion and the complexities of life and how we focus on these things and how we uh, are dealing with these struggles, in these moments, the psalmist says, be still. We are not a very still people. I know I'm not. But be still and know that I'm God because in the moment, in the moment that I, I can't figure out what to do, in those moments, that's the moment I'm called to just stop. Stop trying to take over. Stop trying to do everything on my own. Stop and just be still. And in the stillness, we then reflect on who? God, the God of our peace. The great thing about this is we get to know the Lord. That is an intimate relationship. And we know, and for those who are here today who don't know him, who don't know that refuge and that, that, that sustainer and that peace, that can be yours by faith in his son, who allows us the ability to know him in an intimate way. It is, it's so easier said than done, isn't it? To, to reflect on these words and in the moments not know what to say. You know, I, I joke with people sometimes in these moments that I don't know what to do. I'm like, I've never been trained to do any. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in these moments. I have no idea. But I know this, and I know that God's word is, is pure and it's holy. And I know that he wants me to rely and he wants all of us to rely on his words in the midst of our those. And so today what I want to do is take time um, to make it about God and make it about his sovereignty and his love and grace for us. And that whatever you're going through today, it does not have to be what we have experienced as a church in the last 48 hours. It could be whatever your though is. I want to take this time and just pray, uh, reflect, uh, pray for Jonathan's recovery uh, we don't know what the road leads ahead. And while things are looking great, uh, we don't know what we don't know. But I know a God who is the God of, un of uncertainty. He can make all things certain. And I know that with impossible things, my God is far greater than the impossible. He can take a guy who is gone Friday and make him alive. And he can see his kids and his family now. That's my God. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have the elders come up on the stage. We're going to have Gene 
Kling Bell and BJ Meadows. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray. And then after we're done praying, I'm then going to just ask for uh, this random, awkward two minutes maybe of silence so we can be still and know that he's God. And then after that, we're going to play a song and then I will uh, charge you guys to, to leave. So I'm going to always, these, these prayers are always awkward. So we're going to do this. BJ, then Gene, then I will finish off. So BJ, if you wouldn't care to let's go ahead and pray. you today just in awe of who you are in this moment of in where we feel small and insignificant we just rely on your goodness we trust you knowing that your hand has been in this from the beginning we know that you're working and moving and we know that Jonathan is in your hands just help us to rely on you more to trust you to have more faith and to just see that we don't need to control everything because you are in control. So help us to rely and trust in you more. Embolden our faith and God, just draw us close to you in this time of uncertainty, of of suffering, of just wondering what's going on and what's going to happen. God, we know that you're there. We know that you're you're working. That you love Jonathan better than we do. And so we just call upon your name. We lay ourselves at your feet and know that you're going to do something big that we are not not aware of yet. And uh, God, we just thank you for all the great signs that we've seen so far. And we just pray that you would continue working in marvelous ways that go beyond comprehension and just work miracles. We, We don't serve a God who does nothing. We serve a God who's there, who's with us, and who works miracles. And we are just grateful uh, for your love and compassion upon us, for your mercy and grace, and for Jesus. Dearly Father, um, the last few days have been challenging, difficult, um, through trials and tribulations, but it's been chock full of hope. And your, uh, your amazing grace and control. And we just pray, Lord, um, that... You will continue to work through these things, and we know you're going to show up in a big way that you already have. Um, As we walk through our daily lives, sometimes we do need the reset, that we just need to find ourselves at the foot of the cross, and that is good to do, and we will just continue to do that and and lift Jonathan, Melissa, Ava, Kylie, and Juliet to you. And as a church home and a family, um, we know that you're here that your presence is strong, and that you're going to continue to do your work so that we can, I mean, the amazing testimony that, uh, that we think is going gonna, is gonna, to, you know, come here, but it's your testimony that we can just tell your story and so that lives can be changed. Amen. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, the sovereign king of the universe, the one who can cure anyone and everyone despite what the doctors have said, Despite the vitals, the stats, uh, the statistics, God, we know you are a God of uh, creating miracles. And, Father, in the past 48 hours, we have seen a miracle occur. And we, Father, today, as your church body, as your people come together in support of our, my brother, my friend, my pastor, Jonathan, and the Castlebaum family, that you would heal him as he recovers, that you would give him the strength that only uh, he, he can rely on, the strength that sustains him throughout this time and especially his family, but Father, now more than ever as a church family, that you would convict our hearts and motivate our desires, that we would just fall at the knees of you as King Jesus, that we come to you giving our prayers to you, that we would come and serve as a church for this family, and as one has suffered here amongst us, that we all suffer, but as one rejoices, God, that we may all rejoice, not for Jonathan, but for the glory of God. And God, in this moment more than ever, We ask for your peace. We ask for the stillness so we can reflect and pray, knowing that you are sovereign, not only over the ends, but the means, and that you will take all our prayers, and you will apply it in a mysterious and glorious way. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your son. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So church, now this will be our time of response where we're just going to sit right there and you don't move unless you want to. And we're going to just pray. And for about a minute or two, we're just going to pray and be still and know that he is God. Be still and reflect and pray for your own life, but not only that, for the Kassenbaums as a church family. So let's begin. <laughs>